A 38-year-old man with an adventurous spirit went on a diving adventure in Jackson Blue Springs with his friend. The dive was going well until the man decided to dive into a narrow and tight spot that wasn't marked on their map. Florida has lots of freshwater springs, but there's a spring that most people in Florida don't really know about. It's called Jackson Blue Springs, and it's in Mariana, Florida. This spring is very clear and is great for activities like swimming, diving, snorkeling, and fishing. You can also have a picnic there and play volleyball. In the 1800s, the springs were on big farms and were used as a camp during the war. After the war, people liked to have picnics, vacations, and baptisms at Blue Springs. The water from Blue Springs goes to a big pond called Merritt's Mill Pond, which is good for fishing. The water in Jackson Blue Springs is usually between 68 and 72 degrees Fahrenheit all year. It pumps out a lot of water, about 64.6 .6 million gallons every day. The spring has a maximum depth of 81 to 90 feet and an average visibility of 81 to 90 feet. For the past 40 years, the main spring and the area around it have been taken care of by Jackson County. People can swim, have picnics, and learn scuba diving there. You can rent pavilions for the day, and if you want to go cave diving, you need to have a certification and pay a fee. The Cave Adventures Group is the only one allowed in the off-season, but they can take divers on trips all year. If you're not scared and want to explore deep underwater, you'll discover a big cave system that both beginners and experts have explored. Ben Strelnick was 38 years old, and he was a friendly, open-minded, and adventurous person. He liked to have fun and loved being with good people, having a good time, and listening to good music. He enjoyed outdoor sports, especially scuba diving. Ben also liked doing things like snowboarding, climbing rocks, riding bikes in the mountains, jet skiing, playing mini golf, swimming with big whale sharks, and paddling in a kayak. In 2019, Ben finished college at Johnson State College in Vermont. He studied outdoor education and became certified as a mountain and wilderness EMT as well. When the pandemic was happening, Ben worked as a volunteer EMT for the Rutland Regional Ambulance Corps. He was also active in his community. He had a job in North Carolina with Dan, Divers Alert Network, where he worked as a medic. He worked on a hotline that was open all the time for scuba divers from everywhere. People could call to ask about emergencies while diving underwater. On May 26, 2023, an unforgettable event took place for the Strelnik family and the diving community at large. Ben Strelnik, along with a co-worker and friend, embarked on a journey. Together, they made their way to Jackson Blue Springs. The weather on that day was splendid, and upon reaching the park, the decision to engage in a diving expedition seemed right. While in the spring, the flow of the water seemed normal, and the visibility of the water was great, the perfect condition for a dive. After thoroughly completing all essential safety checks, Ben and his friend prepared themselves by wearing their diving gear and securing their mouthpieces. With everything in place, they confidently entered the cave, ready to explore its depths. The beginning part of the cave, the initial few hundred feet, is not too deep, only about 40 to 50 feet. The main path inside the cave goes down to about 90 feet, where there's a noticeable crack or opening. As the two divers went down, they reached a depth of about 79 feet, which is around the average depth for this cave. They paused their descent and signaled each other with a thumbs up. Then they grabbed onto the guideline that helped them navigate. With the guidelines secured, they bravely continued their journey into the cave. Even though it was a bit dark, they could see a distance of around 80 feet ahead of them. The rocks, made of white limestone, were easily noticeable on both sides of their path. It's important to be cautious when diving in the caves to not stir up the sediment at the bottom as doing so can make the water cloudy and hard to see through. The divers had to be careful not to touch the walls, floor, or ceiling of the cave with their flippers to maintain visibility. As they continued their dive, more than an hour had gone by when they got closer to the first T-junction, the point where the path splits into two. 
Just before they reached the first point where the path split in two, there was a small narrow area that was a bit hard to notice and wasn't marked on their map. While they were passing by this tight spot, Ben managed to spot this small area that was difficult to pass through. But what caught his attention even more was a guideline that led further down this narrow passage. The presence of this guideline suggested that someone had been there before and had ventured through this tight space, possibly discovering something interesting and then returning. This discovery piqued Ben's curiosity and made him eager to learn more. Being the more experienced diver between the two, he took on the responsibility and decided to lead the way by entering the restricted passage. To help them navigate through this tight space, they were using a sidewinder breathing device, which is designed to be smaller and more manageable in confined spaces. This equipment choice boosted Ben's confidence in maneuvering through the narrow area. As he was about to dive into this unknown territory, his anticipation grew and he wondered what they might find beyond the restriction where someone else had left a clue by placing the guideline. Ben began to approach the entrance of the narrow passage. The inside of the passage was silted out due to sediment in the water, making it difficult to see clearly. However, his strong desire to explore and discover new things overpowered any hesitation he might have felt. This eagerness to explore was the driving force behind his decision. The presence of silt in underwater environments can create dangerous situations for divers using scuba gear. This is particularly true in places like enclosed spaces or areas where divers can't easily swim up to the surface. In such situations, the silt can cloud the water, severely reducing visibility. This is especially concerning in underwater caves where the lack of visibility makes it challenging to find the way out. In cases where divers lose their sense of direction, panic can set in, leading to frantic movements that stir up more silt, worsening the situation even further. Considering these potential dangers, divers need to approach such situations with caution and be aware of the risks involved in exploring areas where visibility is compromised. Regardless, he decided to enter the passage. With great care and a determined spirit, he started moving forward, advancing bit by bit with the assistance of the guideline. The guideline served as his lifeline, guiding him deeper into the confined space. Unfortunately, he didn't realize that the walls of the cave were gradually closing in on him due to the limited visibility caused by the sediment. Ben continued his progress, pushing himself forward every few seconds. He wasn't aware the cave walls were inching closer until he began to feel the pressure on his sides. As the walls tightened around him, he recognized that he was in a tight spot. He came to understand that he couldn't move any further ahead, and with the restricted space, he was unable to turn around and go back the way he came. Ben discovered that he was stuck tightly in the narrow passage, unable to move any further. A sense of panic began to creep over him, but he was fully aware that giving in to panic could have dire consequences. He understood that panicking in such a situation could lead to a tragic outcome. He realized that he needed to think quickly and find a way out of this difficult situation. His diving partner, who was with him on this expedition, sensed that something had gone wrong as they couldn't see much inside the constrained passage. It was evident that Ben had encountered a problem and was unable to proceed. The tightness of the space left no room for him to maneuver or withdraw himself. Despite having less experience than Ben and no experience with a closed-circuit diving device, his partner attempted to assist in whatever way he could. After some time went by, it started to become evident that Ben was unable to release himself. His friend was left with no choice but to make the difficult choice to abandon him and go back to the surface to ask for assistance. Even though this decision might cause many people to feel guilty for surviving, it was the right decision to at least save one of the divers, if not both. The authorities were informed and they reached out to Ed Sorensen, a well-known cave diver famous for his rescues in caves all around the world. Regrettably, when they finally reached Ben, it was already too late. He had already passed away. 
Ben suffered a fate that many would conclude was avoidable. But at times, curiosity can get the best of anyone. The adventurous Ben is survived and remembered by his mom, Janet Goldmark, and his dad, Hal Strelnick. He also leaves behind his stepmom and his stepbrothers and stepsisters. Additionally, he is survived by his cousins. Many close friends also held him dear in their hearts. His family finds comfort in the fact that he died doing what he loved. His mother revealed that he knew and accepted the risk involved in diving. He even confidently told his mother, If I died diving, at least know that I died happy. We would like to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching, take a dive on the like and subscribe buttons and hit the bell icon so you get notified when we come back with another.